we like to ask all of you to come forward and fill up all the seats. We anticipate lots of people are coming and we don't want to climb all over you. Please come forward. I know you are comfortable where you are sitting, but come forward and fill up the front seat as many as you can. You're going to enjoy it more. Come forward, please. Please have a seat. Everybody have a seat, please. We're going to start momentarily. Have a seat or leave the room, one of the two. Can you hear me? Can you hear me in the back? I don't believe it. Uh, Miguel, raise the voice, please. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Uh, if, you do, if you keep talking, we're going to delay the start of the program. Uh, we're going to... Uh, I'd like to ask uh, my dear friend, uh, Gisu Mahajer, to start uh, tonight's concert with a prayer. Uh, Gisu Mahajer, please.
O thou kind Lord, this gathering is turning to thee. These hearts are radiant with thy love. These minds and spirits are exhilarated by the message of thy glad tidings. O God, let this American democracy become glorious in spiritual degrees, even as it has aspired to material degrees, and render this just government victorious. Confirm this revered nation to upraise the standard of the oneness of humanity, to promulgate the most great peace, to become thereby most glorious and praiseworthy among all the nations of the world. O oh God, this American nation is worthy of thy favors and is deserving of thy mercy. Make it precious and near to thee through thy bounty and bestowal. Quite a number of uh, messages and telex and telegram has come uh, in recognition of today's peace conference. The one that I'd like to read to you because it's appropriate and uh, it was read this morning is from the mayor of New York City and uh, uh, I don't have it with me. This is different letter. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it does have the, the seal of the city of New York. <laughs> it has something entirely different. But anyway, the, his honor has extended his greeting and his love for all of you that have come tonight and has wished the New York Assembly and all those who are attending this conference the best of luck in bringing about a better world and better environment in this crazy town. Uh, we have a marvelous program tonight for all of you, and it's going to be a surprise on top of surprises. To start with, I'm going to ask a uh, dear friend of mine and friend of all of you, Susie and Kingsley Swan, to start the program tonight. They are a couple who are well known in the musical circle, New England, other places, and they have come to New York City on a number of occasions, and it is a pleasure and honor to introduce you Susie and Kingsley Swan. Ooh, thank you so much, New York, New York. New Jersey, New Jersey. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Rhode Island, Rhode Island, yay! <laughs> and so on. San Diego, San Diego, yay! <laughs> I tell you, this is so wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> you know, I feel fortunate uh, in being here this evening, not so much on the performing end, but to have the pleasure, my first time, in hearing Dizzy Gillespie live. So this is really exciting. I'm very nervous, can you tell? I'm quivering. Um, and the truth is, you see, Kingsley and I both come from musicians as fathers, and my father played horn, and uh, so my roots are kind of in jazz, listening to jazz around the house and stuff. So we figured we'd do some jazz numbers first, if that's okay with you. <laughs> Thank you. For those who like to jitterbug. <laughs> Thank you. 
what you get for playing those bass notes. Let's give a big hand to Kingsley Swan, the one-man band. I mean, really. <laughs> playing the bass notes and the chords, and it's real interesting. But the truth is, it really is going to happen. Do you believe that? We're going to see a day of world peace. Really, of course. And what's worse about it? I mean, that's the good part. The kind of uh, in-between part is that you and I are responsible for bringing about this day. Did you know that? It's kind of scary, isn't it? But thank goodness, you see, God willed it that way. He predicted, he said, this is going to happen. We're going to have this age. And uh, whether you like it or not, you can go along with the program and hasten the day, or you can kind of hold back and fight against it. It'll just take longer to get here. So, of course, we realize the part we have to play, and today brings about another big, giant step in that whole process of world peace. It's wonderful. Give yourselves a hand. Jeez, you deserve it, yes. Oh. 
of our roots was uh, jazz, of course, and the other side is Calypso, because Kingsley and I are originally from Bermuda. So this is for all the island people. Okay? <laughs> New York's an island, isn't it? <laughs> Uh-oh, watch out. <laughs> Uh-oh, I see it now, blue water. Sixty 
three, he said that we should seek to eliminate prejudices of all kinds. And that in this country, our most challenging issue is the unity, the equality of the races.
tell me only this that I have your heart for always and you want me by your side whispering the words I'll always love you And I know if you really care, I'll always be there. Girl, I need to tell you this, there's no other love like you. As I live, I'll give you all the joy my heart and soul can give. Let me hold you. I need to have you near me, and I feel. We'd like to thank you for being so wonderful. And that last note is a result of no smoking, no drinking, and things like that. But I don't do those things, and I can't do that long, long thing. It's great, isn't it, really? OK, we have time for only one more. And um, hey, great things are about to happen, and I'm going to be glued to that seat with my eyes glued to the stage. And um, just the same message again. You can't say it enough, really, that uh, someday the world will be as one, and we got to leave here this evening. Not wait till tomorrow, but embrace the people we meet with a different mindset and a different intention and direct our lives in the betterment of the whole of humanity.
promised day will come Someday the world will be as one Someday the world will be as one And Kingsley Swan. Bravo! Bravo! Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Kingsley. Thanks a lot. Bravo! Uh, it's too bad. We have to keep moving because the promised moment will come soon. And the uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce two other wonderful musicians who have uh, traveled all the way from North Carolina. <laughs> right on! Right on! <laughs> that, that's right! Well, fair, up, up. <laughs> My dear friend, Wilfred Johnson and Mary Davis. Come on! I'm Mary Davis. That's Wilford Johnson. You want to hear the swans again? Good, because they're going to sing with me. 
He said Wilford Johnson and Mary Davis. Mary is going to sing first. I'll be out later. Thank you. Mary and the Swans still. Hey, she's employed them since she got here. <laughs> it's so much fun to go to concerts and just get together with other performers. Can I use my words? Mary, please. Yes, you have my permission. <laughs> This is a song that, um, whoa, gonna feed back. This is a song that is on a, a tape that is for sale here at the conference by Wilbur Johnson and myself. And it's a song about women's role in peace. All right. We're dancing in the audience. You can do our game. We're really excited about a, a group of youth out there that are going to travel the country this summer and did a little bit this winter. We went out to Los Angeles and around talking about peace. How many choices do we have? I mean, you know, we've tried that all, all that other stuff, so it's time. And these guys are going to be working all summer, and hopefully Mary and I can work some with them. Our first song is going to be... Uh, let me look. You got your cheat sheet? Oh, it's going to be a song that I wrote and Mary put the music to. It's called World Unity.
When we realize there's just one God and just one true religion And we all belong to just one family When we eliminate all prejudice and mankind seeks the truth Imagine what a world it's gonna be with a universal language, this world won't seem so bad When women have the freedom till now only men have had When every nation in this world unites to show we care The earth will be one country and all be treated fair When, when we're educated, educated the best that we can be, be. When science and religion work in harmony When the wealthy educate the poor to eliminate poverty Then we'll have heaven here on earth, world unity We'll have heaven here on earth, world unity We'll be waging peace on earth instead of a world war three. The future of this planet depends on you and me. Let's have heaven here on earth, world unity. Thank you, thank you. This is uh, Western North Carolina jazz. <laughs> Come on, Wilford. We know rock when we hear it. <laughs> uh, it was suggested that we probably should use uh, uh, some current songs. I don't know any current songs. <laughs> All I know are the songs that I've been working on. I started writing about five years ago, writing and singing. And um, I came to realize while I was out in my van getting ready to perform that I don't have any with me. I used to perform with a country band for a short while, but don't have any now. But I'm glad to be here, and gosh, it's such a, an amazing thing to realize that five years ago I was living in a school bus riding around looking for things to do. And songs to write about, you know. Uh, and tonight, I'm going to be up here with the Swans and Dizzy Gillespie. You know what that is? It, it's, a, it's an Oreo cookie. Next song. You'll get it. Keep trying. This is the next song. Brand New Age. In this world of creation, we watch the seasons change. Flowers and vegetation bloom and die and rearrange. And as seasons come and go each year, they turn another page. The world of spirit changes too. This is a brand new age. Every age has a springtime and a warm midsummer sun. Every spring brings new life, and this one's just begun. Cold winter now is leaving, it's been such a long, long one. Every age has a springtime, and this one's just begun. Yeah, it's time for man to grow up, and everyone be friends. The earth is just one country, and we're its citizens. It's time to do away with war and stop this childish rage. It's time to stop the war in games. This is a brand new age. Every age has a springtime and a warm midsummer sun. Every spring brings new life. And this one's just begun. Cold winter now is leaving. It's been such a long, long one. Every age has a springtime. And this one's just begun. Yeah, it's time for man to grow up. 
and everyone be friends. The earth is just one country, and we're its citizens. It's time to do away with war and stop that childish rage. It's time to stop the war in games. This is a brand new age. Thank you. It's time to turn loose. Hey, don't it seem that the world is living in the past, misunderstanding what we should hold dear. We live in misconceptions of that old-time religion, don't know who to love or who to fear. Lord, turn me loose on the world, let me love everybody, let me live in love to all the hating through. Give me freedom in this life, make me glad for what I've got. Let everything I do be up to you. You know our moments on this earth are so precious. And when our secret thoughts find that spirit, wow. What day in the future do you look for? The only moment promised is right now. Yeah, turn me loose on the world. I want to love everybody. I want to live and love to all the hatings through. Give, Give me freedom in this life. To make me glad for what I've got. Let everything I do be up to you. You know that we can change this world we can if we all work together. World. We need We've to work to for work love, for and unity. love and unity. We're people we of one planet. God's, God's children put us here yes, together. Let me share Let the me love share my love God has given me. Love. And turn me loose on the world. Let me love everybody. Hold a little love to all the haters through. Give me freedom in this life, make me glad for what I've got. Let everything I do be up to you. Yeah, turn me loose on the world. I want to love everybody. Let me live the love till all the hate is through. Oh, give me freedom in this life, make me glad for what I've got. Let everything I do be up to you. Thank you. I started to say something about ideal circumstances. You're sitting right in the middle of it. This is ideal circumstances. We're working for peace, right? In 1912, Abdul Baha, the son of the, um, the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, said in uh, on the North American continent. I'll have to paraphrase because I can't remember the, the words exactly, but he said, let's try peace for a while. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, we can all, always go back to making war. <laughs> I dedicate this song to all the world's religions and to all the leaders everywhere. Why don't we stop making war? Let's make each other happy. Let's beat them swords into plowshares. And let's try peace for a while. Love each other and share a smile. Life may be better than it's been before. And with a change of attitude, if the whole world don't improve, we can always 
go back to making war. Lord knows we have enough weapons of destruction to wipe out all the people in every land. Any fool can start a war. That ain't what I'm looking for. I say the time for peace is now at hand. Yeah, let's, let's try, try peace for a while. Love each other and share a smile. Life may be better than it's been before. And with a change of attitude, if the whole world don't improve, we can always go back to making war. Where do we go from here? Must we always live in fear of where the screaming missiles will come from? You know the world can't take much more, so if they want to go to war, why don't we take a vote and see who wants to come? Yeah, let's try peace for a while, love each other and share a smile. Life may be better than it's been before. We'll have a change of attitude. And the whole world will improve or we can always go back to making Sing with us. Oh, that's the end of it. I'm sorry you can't say it. Oh, thank you. We'd like to finish with a song that has a very urgent message. It's time to move. If you can pick up on it, sing with us. We'd love to.
Y'all get ready, ready for that other rebel back there. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Wilfred. Bravo. One more hand. Thank you. Right on. Uh, there are those times that uh, one becomes speechless, and uh, it doesn't happen often to me, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a bit exhausted, and uh, there is a better man around who can do a better job uh, saying a few words about the Baha'i faith and the concept of peace and what we stand for and also introduce our honor and distinguished guest for, for tonight, John Gillespie. I'd like to introduce to you my dear brother, Bob Harris. Can I use this? Is that okay? Can everybody see me? Ha 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 ha! Hussein. Can anybody miss him? <laughs> That's what I like about you, Hossein. Is that, you know, Nothing. Friend, I, <laughs> oh. you know, friend, we were supposed to have uh, William Sears tonight, so instead he sent somebody charmer, younger, and cuter, Bob <laughs> Harris. Oh, God. Can we get some lights on in here? Watch. Let... Let there be light. You doubted that I could get the lights turned on. I just want to show you my notebook that I carry around all the time. It's a picture of our home, planet Earth. And on the bottom it says, Peace, don't leave the world without it. And if you think that these performers have come from all over the country tonight to just make you happy, uh, you're partly wrong, but mostly right. <laughs> They've come to really inspire us in our hearts that we will leave here and do something about peace. We cannot trust that God is going to do it all. God has given us the idea he has given us incredible guidance, and now it is up to us to do our part. It's like the man who wanted to win the lottery here in Brooklyn, got down on his hands and knees and said, oh God, let me win the lottery. Went to bed, woke up the next morning, bought a newspaper. His name wasn't in the paper. He was very upset. Got down on his hands and knees, decided that he would pray a very long prayer, prayed for a long time, and finally said, oh God, please, let me win the lottery. Went to bed, woke up the next morning, his name was not in the paper. With tears in his eyes, with yearning and longing in his heart for this money, he made God lots of promises that we all make God when we want money. I'll give it to you, those kinds of promises. I'll give you some. And then when we get it, we say, God who? No. But he was crying, tears in his eyes. And he said, oh God, please let me win the lottery. Please let me win the lottery. And the voice from heaven came to him. And it was the voice of God. And the voice said, give me a break. Go buy a ticket. <laughs> and so friends, what we have to do is we have to take the inspiration of this night and do something with it. I believe that God created music so that we would all be inspired and that we would all change in some way and do something for peace in this international year of peace. On Christmas Day, I was with a wonderful friend of many of you, Wilma Brady, Dr. Wilma Brady, and together we were traveling to the Holy Land. And on Christmas Day, we happened to be going through the airport at Rome. And we were checking baggage and changing from one flight to another. And the security was very, very intense that day. And Wilma and I were traveling together, and it took us a long time to clear security. And Wilma, because she was bringing a coffee pot, one of these big 30-cup jobs, she had to go downstairs into the bottom of this airport, and she had to identify this coffee pot, because it doesn't show up on x-rays or something. I don't know. 
And then she had to explain what kind of coffee she drank. And then she had to explain why don't you drink tea. And every possible question about a coffee pot. It took us about uh, 45 minutes to clear security, and then it took Wilma almost another hour to explain this coffee pot. It was one of the biggest mistakes we ever made, bringing that coffee pot. And while Wilma was downstairs, I was sitting upstairs in the airport at Rome at the LL ticket counter. And I was sitting in one of the empty bays where they put luggage. And there was nobody there. And so I just sat there, I was reading a book. And this young Israeli man came over to me who had been my security officer, who a few minutes before didn't like me at all. Now I had cleared security, so he liked me. He said, he said, your friend didn't come up yet. I said, no. He said, you know, I'm sorry that this takes so long, but it's really for your own safety. And I said, you know, I said, it doesn't bother me a bit that it's taking so long. And I pulled out some pictures of my children and I showed them to this man. And I said, you know, my children are very, very happy that you're taking such good care of me. And he smiled and he pulled out pictures of his children and he said, my children want me to come home safe too. And two days later, we saw in the Jerusalem Post a picture of this man who had been shot in the massacre at the Rome airport. And in fact, they were supposed to, the, the terrorists reported later that they were supposed to attack the flight that Wilma and I were on, on Christmas Day, except that they were so sick they couldn't get out of bed with the flu or something. And so it just brought home to me the fact that the world desperately needs peace. Not just the kind of peace that protects us from missiles, but it also needs the kind of peace where we can have peace in our hearts and peace in our minds so that we can fly on airplanes and be normal people again in this world that is so filled with unhappiness. And tonight's program, and in fact this entire conference today, is dedicated to peace that we can do something in our lives to bring it about, and that we can do it for the children who are so precious to us. The children all over the world have started something called the Children's World Peace Crusade. And the children are writing letters to the leaders of the world, and they're saying, dear leaders of the world, I'm a young child, I want to grow up. They're saying, please meet with your fellow world leaders and please outlaw war forever. And then, along with their letters to the leaders of the world, they're sending a little picture of their face so that these people can see the faces of the children of the world. I would like to share with you a few of the letters that have been sent already. And maybe you might be able to help a child write a letter and send a picture. And maybe that will touch the right heart. And maybe we'll get a little closer to peace. These letters were all to President Reagan, although they're also being sent to uh, Premier Gorbachev and uh, leaders of all the major nations of the world. Um, Dear President Reagan, I wish we could have peace so we would have no wars. If you had a family and one of them died, I bet you would be sad. Signed, Shaza McNair, age seven. Dear President Reagan, do you want the world to be safe or do you want the world not to be safe? Do you want it to? Signed, Adam Crosley, age seven. <laughs> Dear President Reagan, 1986 is International Year of Peace. I want peace all the other years, too. Okay. So does every other person I know. If there's a war, everybody will be killed and there will be houses with nobody to live in them. And that's a waste of earth. Signed, Jesse Richards, age eight. I wish he was age 50, I'd vote for him. <laughs> Dear President Reagan, please make peace. Both teams have enough bombs to blow up the whole world. We don't want to lose our world and our homes and friends and animals and oceans. Signed, Tim Olson, age eight. This one, well, there's so many that I like. This is one I like. Dear President Reagan, Peace. Can we please have peace, okay? <laughs> Signed, Aaron Crosley, age six.
Uh, you want to hear one more? I'll tell you two more. Uh, dear President Reagan, try to make peace in the U.S. Try to make white people like black people. Why are there wars anyway? Why would anyone want to destroy Earth? I am seven years old. I like Earth. Signed, Natalie Swainson. And the last one that I like is, Dear President Reagan, please help bring peace to the world. Help wage peace. Save the whales. <laughs> Amanda Murphy, <laughs> age eight. Now they're doing their bit for peace. What have you done lately? Who have you written to? Who have you sent a meaningful message to? Maybe the most meaningful message that we old people can send is the message that we ourselves are changing. That we are trying to become better people so that when our kids grow up, maybe they will do what we have failed to do. Maybe that's the message we need to send. But they need to understand that we are involved in a great struggle. And the great struggle is to change from being the way we were to the way we want to be. To change from being caterpillars into butterflies. This is where the world needs to go. We need to make a radical, radical change. We need to become aggressive lovers of the human race. We need to have the kind of love in our hearts for each other that the children have for this earth and that the children have for all the people of the world. We need to raise the stakes. We need to put our feet on higher ground and work from a position of strength, and that is a position of love. That is for sure. There was a caterpillar <laughs> sliding along with another caterpillar, and he looked up and he saw a butterfly flying overhead, you know, doing all of its butterfly things. And one caterpillar said to the other one, you know, you couldn't get me up in one of those things for a million bucks. <laughs> and yet, that's where the caterpillar's going, isn't it? And as much as we resist peace, that's where we're going too. As soon as we learn about the quality of love, as soon as we learn that it matters how we treat other people, there was a nine-year-old boy who had a little sister who was two. This little girl had kind of a, a strange blood disease and it was very difficult to keep under control. And she had many transfusions and operations and it was a big problem. And this brother of hers loved her very much and finally everything went haywire and the doctor came to this little boy and said, you know, your sister is going to die unless we can get her some of your blood. She needs your blood. The little boy said, let's do it. They took him into this uh, treatment room and hooked him up to this blood thing where the blood goes from the donor into the recipient. And, and the little girl was receiving her brother's blood and the doctor walked over to the little boy who was nine and said, how are you doing? And the little boy said, I'm doing just fine, doctor. But tell me something, when do I die? And the doctor said, we only need a little bit of your blood, honey. You're not going to die. And this kid would do it. Where does that love come from? That love comes from our Creator. And we have got to have this love in our hearts so that nothing, no government, no policy, no politician, no amount of hatred in the world can stop us. And I think that I am looking at some of the people who can do that. When we have peace in our hearts, we will have peace in the world. And I am so happy that I live in the United States. I am so happy that I have a chance to see people who have such freedom and ability to do things for peace. You sitting in this room in the next 20 minutes can do more for peace than practically any other group of people in the world, if you decide to do it. And to add the inspiration of music, which to me is an extraordinarily powerful inspiration, we have had this wonderful conference and this wonderful entertainment. A week ago, I introduced Wilfred Johnson and Mary Davis in Chicago at the Baha'i National Convention. Wilfred, I don't know how he gets around. He's got this van that's just filled with things. He's, he's moved up in the world from a school bus to a van. And I mean, he's knocking himself out. 
the swans, every time I turn up, here they are singing and dancing and doing all that, that, you know, that stuff that Suzanne does, you know? Why do you think they do that stuff? You think they're making a fortune here tonight? No way. They're doing it so that those of us in this audience will get up and do something. Martin Luther King went to a college called Morehouse College, and the motto of that college is a very simple motto, and I hope that we can all adopt it and make believe that we went to Morehouse College too. The motto is, when you wake up, get up. When you get up, do something. And here in America, we have the ability to do not something, we have the opportunity to do the most great thing, and that is to establish peace on the earth. We have with us some other musicians tonight who have come to share with us their feelings and their heartfelt desire for peace in the world. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the original American music, jazz, played for us for peace by the Mike Longo Trio.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We're the We're the Mike Longo Trio. Thank you very much. We would like to bring out to the stage now a man who is not only very special to me since I yes. was his pianist and musical director for some nine or so years, but he is very special to musicians everywhere because he is the living master of this music we play called jazz. And he has not only been a teacher and great humanitarian, but he's influenced musicians all over the world. It gives me great pleasure at this time to present to you Mr. Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> Today, I had planned on something a little different. Um, I planned on wearing a suit here tonight. <laughs> now, what I did, they picked me up at, at uh, 11.45 this morning, you know, the Bill Boggs comedy show. Well, they picked me up this morning at 11.45. Of course, they didn't get there. To 1215. You know our white people are. <laughs> That's what they say about us all the time. I lay back on them. But the guy got there at 1115. He was on my street and didn't know it. In Englewood, New Jersey. So I had a black, I got a black suit. I pro I prove it to you if you don't you don't believe me. Back here in that bag in the back there, I got a black suit with a Japanese uh, um, shirt. And I got a uh, rock from the Shrine of the Bob. That rock is from the Shrine of the Bob. And I, and I got on my beret. And I got alligator shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I killed him myself. And South Carolina, I, did, I, I would not lie to you. And I killed the alligator myself, and I got them on. I got the shoes on, and I was gonna get all dressed up. But and then I looked at this shirt that I have on. Y'all see it? Can you read it? You see, it says. Uh, Pay. Pay and pay and pay. <laughs> but in French, that means peace. Some believers in France brought this to me when I was playing over there the last time. They brought this to me. So I put it on. So it says, Peace, Baha'i. That's what it said. <laughs> so I thought, what more could I do but come up here with a piece behind sweatshirt on for y'all? <laughs> so, so I decided to leave my suit back there, and I'm going to take off this and my pants. <laughs> no, no. I lied that time. <laughs> Come on yourself. That sounds like something.
if they want me to play down here again, they're gonna have to get another piano. <laughs> That piano is flat and flatter than my foot. <laughs> Almost on another key. some bad ears. <laughs> okay. I just like to let you all know that yesterday was my 46th wedding anniversary. <laughs> surprised me. I didn't even think I was going to live this long. Much less being married this long. I tell you, boy, that's something. Else. Wait till you reach this millennium. You will understand that picture. Because it's, a, it's dangerous. Dangerous. I'm going to make it.
That was Girl of My Dreams, I Love You. All right. One of the great forces in this Native American art form that we call jazz and which we are positive will be the classical music of the future. One of the great innovators and contributors was the late Thelonious Fear Monk. All of you remember him. We'd like to give you our interpretation of Mr. Monk's masterpiece. A beautiful ballad called Around Midnight.
Thank you very much. All right. We don't have too much time for applause. We got to play. So we will, we will ask, we will please ask you to uh, try to do hold your applause because it's all right with me, I'm Because I'm sounding good tonight. I don't want nobody to cut it off. <laughs> well, I got new teeth. I got a new bridge. It's bad. This new bridge is so good, I want to eat it. <laughs> but I can't because it's made out of all kinds of stone. <laughs> Look at this guy here. <laughs> I got so much gold in my mouth. The other day on 125th Street, a guy walked up to me with a pair of pliers <laughs> and say, stick them up. <laughs> I wouldn't open my mouth though. I did like that. Because I didn't have no money in my pocket. But he wanted that gold out of my mouth. He didn't get it out. He didn't get it. Uh, Here's a tune now that has been very closely associated with me over many, many decades. Mainly because I wrote it. <laughs> it has withstood the vicissitudes of the contingent world. and has moved in an odyssey into the realm of the metaphysical. <laughs> Shaka Khan, though. <laughs> 